in the recent months, I think people, it's no longer like the theoretical discussion. It's just people are becoming so uh, influenced by this ninth wave that um, they can no longer dis, uh, deny that the right end date is October 28, 2011, this year. And, uh, you know, before people really had the knowledge uh, of the, um, what I really calendrical knowledge about the Maya uh, in the 80s, there was a bunch of um, intuitive psychics uh, who started to talk about these things, and they often would place the the um, end of the calendar at 2011. Uh, and uh, 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 but then came this wave of people going to the archaeology, and they found no, it couldn't be 2011. But uh, as I'm, my my opinion is that the psychics that were sensitive at that point, they were absolutely right. And uh, um, but then the, the sort of a more um, orthodox or archaeological uh, thing came uh, um, came to dominate for a long time. And now we're in the situation that things are becoming very, very real. And I really think it's important that people align with the way the way it's actually developing, and not based on some kind of theoretical idea that somebody has in his head. Well, speaking of that last wave, the universal is co-creation. Mm -hmm. um, Ian Lundgold, in his seminars, had a slightly different dates for the end of the last cycle, the beginning of the one that we're currently in. So he had it ending, I think it was February 10th, um, and then the new cycle beginning then and ending October 28th. Um, then you changed it to end uh, and begin um, March, March 9th, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. um, and it's an 18-day cycle instead of a 20-day cycle. So mm -hmm. I'm... I've been puzzled about why it changed from a 20-day cycle to an 18-day cycle for the final cycle, and why it um, started a month a month later than he had calculated. Can you respond to that? Yes, um, I, I I have essentially I was vacillating or wavering, I suppose, when I I think in my very first book I wrote. Um, probably March 9th, uh, 2011. But then in the, my second book that has become much more widespread and which was uh, the one that uh, Ian would base himself mainly on, uh, it said uh, February 11th or pe February 10th um, of 2011. But I do write also in that book that I'm not quite quite sure about this. And um, mm -mm. The February 10th date was basically just the last of the Tolkien rounds uh, before the uh, the culmination of, of the calendar. Uh, but uh, it wasn't quite logical to begin with, because what would have been logical is to have a 20-fold difference in free, uh, 20-fold increase in frequency every time you go to a, a new and higher wave. And in this case, you actually would start at March 9th, uh, 2011. Uh, and it's sort of, I, I, I was wavering uh, about these things um, in, until sometime 2010, where, where I, I just went, uh, decided that the, the right thing is what I had originally thought, which was March 9th, uh, 2011. And uh, I think at this point, when we... A, a, a large number of people actually experience themselves the um, frequency increase that was activated um, at the same time as the uh, earthquake in Japan. Um, it, it really feels uh, very strong. And uh, this wave is, is the stronger, if you like, and it's more clear in its shifting energies compared to the uh, galactic underworld that we were in uh, previously. That's at least my experience, and I think a lot of pe people would share that. So it's. Um, I think he basically he 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 took that uh, date and uh, um, 
that I had uh, put in that book, uh, even though I had sort of written a question mark about it, and uh, that, that's how it happened. It, you know, it's still the, the, the Tzolkin, the 260 day count, it's still a valid thing, but it's not exactly the ninth way. So um, that, that is what, what I'd like to say about that. Okay, thank you very much. I'll turn it over to Lori now. Thank you. Hi, Carl. Hello. I have a question about what comes after October 28th, 2011. I understand that this is a paradox in itself, since the mm -hmm. end of the calendar could also be thought of as an end to time itself, or at mm -hmm. least time as we currently perceive it. And as I thought further about this question, I came to better understand that what we are talking about here can't really be known by us now, which is remarkably similar to what Cliff has seen in his data, or mm -hmm. I should say a lack of data after a certain point early in 2012. So okay. ask another way, do you think that this calendar ending and the unknowable what comes after could be the universe's way of leveling the playing field so that no one has any advantage over anyone else, no foreknowledge of what is to come. And as I write this question, I, I think it can be no other way. Can you comment on that premise? Oh, yeah. I think that's a very interesting observation also then from the WebBot uh, project. It just makes perfectly sense. And I've heard before people, like psychic people saying that they cannot see anything. Uh, and and that, that, to me, is quite uh, understandable, I would like to say. So uh, this is how I look upon it. Um, October 28, 2011, there are nine long waves that will come to a completion, to an end, you might say. And then what happens, we may wonder. Um, um, because it, what... What these nine waves um, has done, we should, we should really uh, look upon them as non-cyclical, I think. They are waves, but they are very much direct. They go from seed to mature fruit. And the result is that human beings or anything existing in um, being influenced by these waves have sort of been uh, compelled to move in the directions that the wave have, waves have been pointing out. What this means is that, you know, my, uh, as you probably know then, uh, I've been able to be, to successfully make predictions based on in this model in several important cases. And the reason is simply that I have assumed that the, the new waves somehow are reflections in their overall um, uh, development of the previous waves, or the lower waves, uh, as you might say. And uh, so, uh, nothing, everything has been directed, everything has been subjected to these waves, and the influence that these waves have had on our consciousness. Now, what will happen October 28, 2011, is that all of these directed waves will come to completion. What this means is that I cannot predict anything beyond that point because no longer do I have that uh, fundamental tool that I've had in the past to compare the waves and, and understand the basic rhythm from seed to mature fruit. So, um, as the directed waves come to an end, there might not be any direction anymore in the evolution of the universe. And this is not, that's not, you know, I don't even think a, a new cycle will begin, as some people think. No, I think it's undetermined. And life will be lived moment by moment by moment. And uh, it's a big freedom in this, for the first time. It's a big freedom of not living under sort of the the pressure of what the the the, the way the universe has, has created this evolution. Um, so I think that's an important thing. Um, 
I also what also comes to the mind is is that the people in India, for instance, uh, they talk about the idea of enlightenment. They say that an enlightened person uh, is someone whose actions cannot be predicted. Or, well, you're not necessarily um, enlightened because you're unpredictable. But if you are un, uh, uh, enlightened, you are unpredictable. Uh, you, you choose freely, so to speak. And so um, I don't think that after that point there is anything set. There is no uh, predetermination of the course of event from that uh, uh, point in time. And it, it's, it will be a completely new field, a completely new stage of creativity for us humans to, um, uh, to live in. And um, uh, I emphasize mostly the, 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 what sounds like the best um, aspects of this, that living in the present moment, moment by moment by moment, and being free, being not like a puppet that does exactly what the cosmic plan compels you to do. Um, so um, it's, it just makes perfectly sense that uh, from this point it would be very difficult to uh, predict what is going to happen. I, I, I do not claim to make such predictions except for in very, very general terms. And certainly I cannot make any timed predictions from that point and onward. Okay, thank you very much. I like the idea of uh, humanity graduating yeah. <laughs> and being allowed to play in the universe with all the other universal creatures. <laughs> <laughs> and now we have our questions in categories. We're moving into a category of consciousness and time. Mm -hmm. um, I have the first question. I've been tossing around the idea of humans becoming more psychically aware and trying to consider what the repercussions would be to such a development on a widespread global scale. This too would seem to be a way for universe to level the playing field. If it slowly becomes increasingly more difficult for those individuals in leadership positions to lie, cheat, and steal in order to control and manipulate the masses, it seems like this might be an obvious result of an emerging consciousness of unity. Uh, please expand on the concept of unity consciousness as it relates to humans becoming more psychically aware. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, in the model that I um, have presented and developed, um, each wave creates a certain uh, frame of consciousness, is the word I'm using. Uh, and really what it is, is it, it sort of divides the human mind uh, along certain lines, especially those that are related to the left and right brain halves. And these divisory lines basically filter out certain aspects of our mind. And these...